the next topic is ratio proportion let's start with ratio first what is a ratio if we are given two quantities a and b of the same kind then the ratio of a to b is written as a is to b or a upon b that is the ratio of two quantities of the same kind is the fraction that one quantity is of the other here a is the first term which is called the antecedent and b is the second term called the consequent note a by b is equal to ma upon mb that is if we multiply both the terms by the same quantity m the value of the ratio remains unchanged similarly if we divide both the quantities by the same number m the value will be unchanged that is a by b is equal to a by m upon b by m provided m is not zero how do we compare two ratios if we are given two ratios a by b and x by y we want to compare them we take their lcm as by so the first ratio becomes ay upon by and the second ratio will be xb upon yb now to compare them we see if ay greater than xb if it is greater then the first ratio is greater than the second ratio if ay equal to xb then the two ratios are equal and if ay less than xb then the first ratio is less than the second ratio now how do we solve sums on ratio to do this we will be studying some properties of ratio now if we are given two ratios which are equal say a by b is equal to c by d we alternate b and c we get a by c is equal to b by d this property is called alternando now again we have a by b is equal to c by d we take the inverse of both the ratios we get b upon a is equal to d upon c this property is called invertendo now a by b is equal to c by d we add one on both the sides we get a plus b upon b is equal to c plus d upon d this property is called componendo now same way we subtract one from both the sides we get a minus b upon b is equal to c minus d upon d this property is dividendo now this is not enough there is one more property we divide componendo by dividendo when we do so the denominators b and b cancel d and d cancel we are left with a plus b upon a minus b is equal to c plus d upon c minus d now what do we name this property as this is called componendo dividendo this is going to be the most important property for this topic we can also remember this as numerator plus denominator upon numerator minus denominator now we also have composition of ratios if we are given two ratios a by b and c by d then the compounded ratio will be ac upon bd that is the product of numerators upon product of denominators and this is applicable for any number of ratios now if we have only one ratio say a by b then its duplicate ratio is a square by b square its triplicate is a cube by b cube sub duplicate will be root a by root b and sub triplicate cube root of a upon cube root of b
the prerequisites for this topic are a plus b the whole square a minus b the whole square a plus b the whole cube a minus b the whole cube Now let's do some problems based on ratio. The first one, find the duplicate ratio of 5 is to 9. Duplicate will be 5 square is to 9 square that is 25 is to 81. Now find the triplicate ratio of 2 is to 3. So it will be 2 cube is to 3 cube that is 8 is to 27. Next question, find the subduplicate ratio of 81 is to 64. That will be root 81 is to root 64. We get 9 is to 8. Now we want to find the subtriplicate ratio of 27 is to 8. So cube root of 27 is to cube root of 8. We get 3 is to 2. Now the next problem, if A is to B is equal to 4 is to 5 and B is to C is equal to 10 is to 9, find A is to C and A is to B is to C. Here we are given A by B is equal to 4 by 5 and B by C is equal to 10 by 9. We want to find A by C. So we multiply the two given ratios we get 4 by 5 into 10 by 9. Cancel 10 and 5. So we will be left with 4 into 2 upon 1 into 9. So A by C is equal to 8 by 9. That is A is to C is equal to 8 is to 9. Now whenever we are given the ratio in is to form, we must write the answer also in is to form. Now the second part in this to find out a is to B is to C. Here, in the first ratio, corresponding to B, we have 5. Whereas, in the second ratio, corresponding to B, we have 10. We want to make them equal. That is, we multiply the first ratio by 2. So, first ratio will be A is to B is equal to 8 is to 10 and second ratio as it is. Now we combine the two ratios to get A is to B is to C is 8 is to 10 is to 9. Now to the next problem, which is greater, 5 is to 6 or 17 is to 19? According to you, which is greater, 5 by 6 or 17 by 19? Let's check that out. We will take the LCM as 6 into 19. So the first ratio becomes 5 into 19 upon 6 into 19 and the second ratio is 17 into 6 upon 19 into 6. We get 95 upon 114 and here 102 upon 114. Now which is greater? Obviously 102 is greater than 95. So the second ratio 17 is to 19 is greater. Now to the next problem, find the compounded ratio of x minus y is to x plus y, x plus y the whole square is to x square plus y square and x raised to 4 minus y raised to 4 is to x square minus y square the whole square. Here we are given three ratios, we want to find their compounded ratio. We know that compounded ratio is Product of numerators 
upon product of denominators. So we multiply the three numerators and divide by the three denominators. We get now in the numerator we have x plus y the whole square which can be written as x plus y into x plus y and x raised to 4 minus y raised to 4 is x square minus y square into x square plus y square using the formula a square minus b square is a minus b into a plus b. Now in the denominator we write x square minus y square the whole square as x square minus y square into x square minus y square. Now cancel whatever possible. We are left with x minus y into x plus y in the numerator and denominator x square minus y square. But x minus y into x plus y is nothing but x square minus y square. So we cancel them. We are left with 1. Next problem, if x cube plus y cube is to x square plus y square is greater than x square plus y square is to x plus y, show that x square plus y square is greater than 2xy. Now in this case, we are given two ratios but with a greater than sign. So we will cross multiply to get x cube plus y cube into x plus y and on the right we get x square plus y square into x square plus y square. Now in the left side we expand that is x cube into x plus y and then y cube into x plus y. We get x raised to 4 plus x cube y plus y cube x plus y raised to 4. On the right side we have x square plus y square the whole square because both the brackets are the same. Now expand this we know a plus b the whole square formula that is a square plus 2ab plus b square. We use that here to get x raised to 4 plus 2x square y square plus y raised to 4. Now we have x raised to 4 on both the side, we cancel them. We also have y raised to 4 on both the sides, cancel them. Now from the left side, take out xy common. We get xy into x square plus y square. On the right side, we have 2x square y square. Now divide both the sides by xy to get x square plus y square greater than 2xy. So we have proved. Now the next problem, if x is to y is equal to 7 is to 11, find the ratio 11x minus 5y is to 2x minus 11y. Now here we are given x by y is equal to 7 by 11. What values can x take? Can we say x is 7 and y is 11? Or can we say x is 14 and y is 22? Or x is 21 and y is 33? Which values will x take? x, we don't know what value can it take because it is a multiple of 7 and y is a multiple of 11. So here we introduce a constant called k. We will write x as 7k, y as 
eleven k, and then substitute x and y's and simplify. Please note here, it is very very important that you bring in k. If you don't take k, you will get the same answer, but no marks will be awarded because your concept will be wrong. That is, you are assuming that x is seven and y is eleven, which is not the case. It is a multiple of seven and a multiple of eleven. Now let's substitute. We get eleven into seven k minus five into eleven k upon two into seven k minus eleven into eleven k. Simplify. We get seventy seven k minus fifty five k upon fourteen k minus one twenty one k. Now in subtraction we get twenty two k and in the denominator minus one zero seven k. Now k and k cancels. We have twenty two upon minus one zero seven. Now where should we put this minus sign in the numerator, denominator, or in the center? It does not make a difference wherever you put the minus sign because the meaning remains the same. Now the next problem, if two x minus y is to five y minus three x is equal to five is to three, find x is to y. Here we are given two ratios which are equal, so we can cross multiply and simplify. On cross multiplication, we get three times two x minus y is equal to five five y minus three x. Open up the brackets. We get six x minus three y is equal to twenty five y minus fifteen x. Now take x terms on one side. We take x to the left. Six x plus fifteen x. We get twenty one x. Take y to the right to get twenty five y plus three y. That's twenty eight y. Now. Take x upon y is equal to twenty eight upon twenty one. Now twenty eight and twenty one they have a common factor seven. We simplify to get x upon y is equal to four upon three. Now in the question we are asked find x is to y. So we write x is to y is equal to four is to three. Here's the next problem. Two numbers are in the ratio of three is to five. If eight is added to each number, the ratio becomes two is to three. Find the numbers. So in this case, we are given two numbers with a ratio of three is to five. As we have done earlier, ratios means always multiples. So we let the numbers be three x and five x. Now we are given if eight is added to each number, so we get three x plus eight and five x plus eight. Their ratio is equal to two upon three. Now we want to simplify this, so we cross multiply to get three times three x plus eight is equal to two times five x plus eight. Simplify nine x plus twenty four is equal to. 10x plus 16. Take x to the other side and 16 to the left side. We get 8 is equal to x. Now the numbers are 3x and 5x. So we will get 3 into 8. That is 24. And the second number as 5 into 8. That's 40. So the numbers are 24 and 40.
Now to the next problem. If x upon y is equal to 3 upon 5, find the value of 2x plus 3y upon 2x minus 3y. Also to find 3x square minus 2y square upon 3x square plus 2y square. Here we are given x upon y as 3 upon 5. We have two methods. The first method would be the k method which we have studied earlier. But let's learn a new method. Here you observe that the coefficient of x is 2 and the coefficient of y is 3 in the numerator and the denominator. Now in such a case, it is easier to use the componendo dividendo method. That is, we are going to use the properties of ratio. Now, x upon y is equal to 3 upon 5. We make the coefficient of x as 2 and y as 3. That is, we multiply the ratio by 2 upon 3. Now, if we do that on the left, we have to do that same thing on the right side. So, we get 2x upon 3y is equal to 2 upon 3 into 3 upon 5. On simplification, we get 2 upon 5. Now, we apply the properties of ratio that is componendo dividendo. You remember that? That would be numerator plus denominator upon numerator minus denominator. Here we get 2x plus 3y upon 2x minus 3y is equal to 2 plus 5 upon 2 minus 5. We simplify, we get 7 upon minus 3. So that is the required result. Now to the second part, we want to find 3x square minus 2y square upon 3x square plus 2y square. Now we have x upon y. We first make it as x square upon y square by duplicating the ratio, we get x square upon y square is equal to 3 square upon 5 square. Now make the coefficient of x square as 3 and coefficient of y square as 2. So we multiply the ratio x square upon y square by 3 upon 2. We get 3 upon 2 x square upon y square is equal to 3 upon 2 into 3 square upon 5 square. Now in simplification, we get 3x square upon 2y square is equal to 27 upon 50. Now apply componendo dividendo on both the sides. We get 3x square plus 2y square upon 3x square minus 2y square is equal to 27 plus 50 upon 27 minus 50. Simplify 77 upon minus 23. But we have plus in the numerator and minus in the denominator right now. But what we want is minus on the top and plus at the bottom. So we invert the ratio that is we apply invert tendo to get 3x square minus 2y square upon 3x square plus 2y square is equal to minus 23 upon 77.